Encaustic painting is an interesting painting technique. It's one of the oldest forms. You're going to be turning raw um, beeswax into a medium. It's your binder. And you have some raw pigment added together with some heat. And you have a painting. So I kind of set up a big, a, like a little still life here, and this is going to be a little complicated because you only have one shot at looking at me. So I'm going to do my best to show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. But it's kind of nice to just have people hang out with me while I paint. Welcome to my studio. Um, so what I normally do and what I can do tomorrow if people are interested is show you how I make these encaustic cakes, which is beeswax. This wax happens to be from my backyard where I was raising bees. So I saved the wax and I rendered it and then I can cook it down and add resin to it and then form these cakes. Um, it's kind of a fun process. It's a little tedious, but you can buy encaustic binder or medium at any art store. Sometimes you can even get them pre-made with color. Sometimes when they are a little bit more of a toxic pigment, I prefer not to have that floating around in my studio, so I'll use um, pre-made. So kind of the same thing when I'm doing my uh, oil paint when I'm making it which I can do that on another day as well. So let's see, what else can I talk about? Oh yeah, so if people are interested in learning how to do that, I can totally do that demo tomorrow. It's like cooking. Um, I can tell you what I have set up here, which is kind of, it's pretty, I don't know, standard if you're gonna do encaustic, but because I don't have steel, um, steel plates with a flame. I'm using regular roasting pans or just, I don't know, electric skillets. You can kind of see them. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them on Amazon or I like to find them at thrift stores because they're, you know, already kind of gone and I'm not going to be cooking in them. I'm just going to be cooking my paint in them. I also start with a surface that has a hard board. You don't want to use canvas with encaustic. You could, but it's a flexible surface. And when you have flexible surfaces, you can see how um, brittle this is. I can come close and like show you. This is this is uh, the encaustic with pigment, and it's just really brittle. You can kind of see. So if you have a flexible surface. It could crack. So you always want to use a hard surface. You could use paper, but then you want to bind it to something or seal it down. So what I do is I use masonite. You can use aluminum if you wanted to, but you just have to have something like an absorbent ground. I These are made with chalk gesso, like handmade gesso. So I use rabbit skin glue and chalk with a little bit of titanium white in it. This one I did not use titanium white in and you can see how it yellows. I don't know if that's any, you can see the difference in the color there. Um, this is what it looks like un, without supports. This has supports. And I always tape the edges too, just to keep it clean so that it is not stuck to the wood when I want to take it off and it's just easy to 
basically put on the wall right afterwards. So that's just about the surfaces. Um, what I also like to do, instead of just start with a blank white surface, I like to kind of use up whatever muddy and caustic was there from the last time I painted. And I work into it to kind of make a ground, essentially. Um, something that will come through in the painting underneath, but also something that just makes it thicker. This is like an impasto form of painting. I, I'm sure everybody has seen those Roman and Egyptian sarcophagus paintings that if you have been to the Met or something and you first walk into the Egyptian room, there's these, pretty sure they're Roman um, portraits and they're made of encaustic and this stuff lasts forever. It has resin and beeswax in it. It's not going anywhere. So it's pretty cool, but they are very fragile. So they have, they're very heat sensitive. I'm cooking with heat here. I'm painting with heat. So as soon as I dip my brush into this, my palette, which is my electric skillet, um, it starts to dry as soon as I put it on my surface. So it's a little frustrating, especially if you want to do something representational, which is what we're going to do today. Um, so I started this because it's a little tedious. You could use a bigger brush, but again, because everything dries so fast, I like to use a smaller brush. And I'm just showing you how I do this. I'm not necessarily going to use this surface to paint my still life today because it's pretty big. Um, I think most people that do encaustics do abstract paintings in them or will use it for like much smaller pieces. They might even put it on a hot plate itself. There's, everybody has their own way of doing things. This is, this is my way. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Let's see. Um, it becomes really textured and I'll bring it closer for you to see because I know it's kind of, it's really hard to see from that angle. Um, but since we're in quarantine, I am doing this solo. I don't have a Bob Ross set up. That would be pretty cool, but I don't. And I don't think I could do that anyways, because like I said, it dries so fast. Um, I'll show you the texture that happens here and then I usually use a heat gun to kind of smooth it out because everything else that goes on top um, I don't want the texture underneath to inform how I'm drawing so I'll show you how that goes And I only have one plug for my electric setup, so it's gonna take a few minutes to do things in here. I'm plugging that one so I don't blow a fuse. Plugging in my heat gun. Can you see the texture and how it's very, oh, and also I can touch it and I can scratch it. It's very delicate, but it dries so fast. See, nothing. It's a very satisfying way to paint and do some sketches if you just wanna get something out. But 
because of the nature of the material, it's very difficult to um, control. So, and it's not something I do every single day. So every time it's a little bit of a learning curve. All right, and I'll show you the difference after I do this. Let me get that heat gun hot. I usually start from the middle. I really wish you could see this. Oh, maybe I can move a little closer. You want to keep it very level. So the wax doesn't move too far. But I'm just going to show you right here how it starts to melt again. But don't do it at that angle. That's a bad idea. It's already kind of messed up. But I can move it around again, which I am. And you can add more and more um, encaustic back onto it and level it out too. So there's. It's a very forgiving medium, but you just kind of have to know the nature of how it works. And then, like anything else, you can control it a little better. pockets, like uh, little air pockets in here, but you can kind of go back over it again and yeah, it'll smooth out. I don't know why I chose such a big piece for my demo. That was kind of silly. I do have a really hard time painting small. Not that it's hard to paint small. I just want everything big. Alright, it's getting there getting there. Alright, there's still some bubbles in here, but when I add my next layers of paint, it'll, it'll kind of go away. And you can always take this back into it and um, smooth it out. So before my brushes get too solid in that, I'm going to move it over here and add few more brushes. Oh, and I should talk about brushes with you guys. Do you ever have those brushes in your, um, I don't know, you just like keep them around, but you know that you can't use them anymore for acrylic or oil? Usually oil. You don't want to put anything that has plastic into your, hi Robert, <laughs> um, into encaustic, because remember, this is heat and it's all natural materials, and acrylic is plastic. So, um, any brush that you had left over that has no plastic in it and is like natural, um, you can use for this. But the ones that are kind of crappy and you wanna get rid of, 
you can put them into the graveyard of encaustic brushes. Because <laughs> once they're used for encaustic, there's no going back. switch colors, I have to do this game of movement. I'm using like three different hot plates, so I have <laughs> different palettes. Um, you never want to make your palette smoke either that's super important because it can be toxic remember there's like tree resin and uh, beeswax in it and if it gets too hot then it's bad for your lungs and right now we want to keep our lungs really healthy all right so I have let me show you what it looks like after I smoothed it out, it's like shiny. That texture is kind of gone. And again, it's nice and smooth. And you could even take a like very soft cotton cloth and buff your encaustic painting and it will be almost reflective, very, very shiny. Um, I don't know if you can see that I have this set up here. Yeah, I think you can. But you don't see it from my vantage point, which has a jawbone, a pig's jawbone, a rock. It's a very beautiful rock that feels very much like an ultramarine, like if it was to be ground up. But it's not, because that's not a real, or it's not a natural pigment. And then flowers from my garden that I picked today that I thought would be really nice in this setup. And something that I tend to do, I don't necessarily like to paint um, exactly what I see. I like to embellish or leave certain things out or put certain things in. It just doesn't have to be so literal, you know? Um, so I have my paint getting hot on this palette that has more vibrant colors and I'm going to use thinner or smaller brushes. Does anybody have any questions at all? Because I can see your comments. I have it basically. Looking for something to elevate my um, skillet because it has a fat dripper in it, this thing, and my wax will sometimes fall into it. Oh shoot, it's smoking. Alright, I don't know if you can see it's smoking here, but we don't want that, so I just turned my heat down. Um, You don't want that. Oh, thank you. I really do like my studio. Um, Smoke, but 
Well, normally I use for a larger painting or I would say um, paintings on canvas, I do use oil and acrylic. Acrylic first as a ground and my underpainting and then I use oil. Right now what I'm doing is using encaustic, which is wax and resin plus pigment. So it's um, a different kind of medium and yeah, I just thought it would be a little interesting as something that's a little bit different. Um, I have a heat, a s electric skillet right here that I'm using as my palette. So, and I'm gonna be drawing from this still life right here. If you guys want me to move the camera, let me know because I can move it over so you can see a little bit closer to what I'm doing, but I sort of like how there's a bigger um, vantage point right now. Again, this is kind of crazy because it dries so fast that I have to figure out how to do this, like figure out where my body position is to the palette. Um, Especially as an oil painter, you get so used to things drying like very, very slowly. And this dries very, very fast. I can't see anything that I'm doing. Let me move it. This technique that I'm doing right now is encaustic painting. Is that, hopefully that's a little better. Palette's better? Good. It's a <laughs> I like the thumbs up I'm getting. So you can kind of see how this melts too. Although I don't really want it to, I don't want my blue to melt into my yellow. I ain't going for green right now. I guess I'm getting green.
I'm wondering if I should do a smaller painting. This is pretty big. <laughs> um, maybe I will. Because this is a live thing and you guys don't want to be hanging out with me for like two hours. So, um, Although I can always just post the finished painting afterwards. I think I'm just gonna do the bouquet, which is this. That should be fun. Finding that right brush is complicated. Can you see this, how it's melting? Isn't that satisfying? Let me get my camera over here, or my light over here. stressed when I paint though. Mm, I decided I do not like where I just put that so guess what I'm gonna do I'm gonna erase it. And how am I gonna erase it? With my heat gun. This is a different canvas that I already had, um, or surface that I already had prepared. Just in case you were wondering. It's not like gone or anything. Hi, Polly. Um, but it's smoothed out. So when I paint over it, since everything is so opaque, it will be, it'll be good. Since I want this picture to be mostly about the flowers, I was like, oh yeah, I don't need this jar in here so much. I have to monitor the, um, somebody asked what are the pros and cons using encaustic technique compared to oil? Um, well, it's a very, very different technique. Um, as I was explaining, it's kind of, I don't even know what to relate it to, but like with oil, things you know, you have time, you have time to think about it. It's, it goes on smoother. It's, um, you can work into something for days. Whereas this, you have literally seconds to do, to make a mark and for it to, to work. Cause you're using heat and a very hard material. I think, I think you just get a different effect and you can like really build up your surfaces. 
So you can get like a really impasto look if you wanted to do that. Some people really like seeing chunky, chunky paintings and painting with a lot of material. And that is really fun. Like if you wanted to, to achieve that, you could do that with oil too, but that would take forever. This, seconds. But they would be very, very heavy paintings because wax and resin is heavy. I personally just, re I really do love the texture that forms with this and how it teaches me to have immediate decision making, which sometimes I, I take forever to, to make um, an oil painting and it's, it gets a little frustrating. So I guess I kind of use um, encaustic technique as a break so I can get something done and feel like I made a painting pretty fast. Although they're very, very challenging to make well. I don't wanna make it sound like they're easy. I just think like with acrylic too, you know, you can make something and it'll go, it'll just go faster. You can work faster. Hey everyone who's just joining. Um, I am working in encaustic, so not um, oil, just uh, wax cakes that I've made, which has beeswax and tree resin in it. Um, and I cook that down and then I put them in little cupcake tins and I let them go into the refrigerator over time and they just pop out and I can use them for melting directly onto my electric skillet and I mix raw pigment into it. You could do oil, but I've never done that before and it seems a little weird to put linseed oil directly on something hot, so I just avoid that. I do put a little bit of var, like I think a little, I forgot what my exact recipe was. <laughs> I haven't made these in so long. Um, but again, if you guys are interested in learning how to do that, I'm happy to do a demo tomorrow. I have my recipes like in the corner and I can, I can do that for us. Uh, let's see. What are they doing? This is really hard to multitask like this. <laughs> um, okay. Does that answer your question, Justina? Yeah, if any of you are familiar with how I work, it takes me a long time to make painting. I'm sure it takes a lot of people a while. The color is just raw pigment. It's a really, really cool process. Um, very satisfying. I even have some um, crayons that I have thought of trying, but I don't know if that's totally something that would work with this, so I don't wanna do that as part of this demo without knowing for sure. That would be pretty funny.
Professor Valdez. I'm responding to somebody's um, comment, not just yelling out Professor Valdez. <laughs> just so you know. Oh yeah, you can you can do monotypes on a hot plate with crayons. You can for sure. I just mean painting directly onto the surface with what medium I have. I just don't know if the crayons would mix well with my um, binder. Hope everybody's staying healthy and enjoying their time off, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to look at the bright side of things because if I dwell too much on the negative, it just, it hurts my heart. I am painting from this bouquet that I, um, picked from my garden this morning. So it's kind of hard because I'm manning the camera and everything to have too many um, movements, but I hope you can kind of see what I'm working from on my panel here. I'm not used to talking and painting, so, or at least talking about what I'm painting. I'm used to talking about whatever. I don't know. It's been really fun to scroll through Instagram and see so many artists and their process. It's been like this big virtual studio tour. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Do you like being able to check in on people? I mean, if I were to just go through my feed right now, it would be like everybody has a live streaming thing happening. And that's really fun. So yeah, this doesn't look like anything right now. I'm just sort of like mapping out my, my stuff. Um, don't necessarily have any specific techniques with this way of painting. I just kind of go with what works or what looks good. So I see that somebody says that they wanna see a monotype demo. I could do that one of these days as well. I think we're gonna be doing, um, I'm working with the jaunt, as I mentioned in my story. And we're planning on doing this every single day for the week. So just tune in and hang out with me and I'll be doing something. And don't forget, you guys could order a print, like you can pre-order a print um, from the jaunt, which will have my artwork uh, from this time period. And it's a screen print and it's three layers. So it just kind of supports the programming and also um, me. So like when I do, when the quarantine is lifted, we can, um, resume regularly scheduled programming and I will be going to Alaska and the prince end up ultimately funding that trip. I'm, I'm reading some of the um, comments. Yeah, I agree. Um, I really do like having, like artists are really usually so isolated and not, not always, I'm a extrovert, but um, it's, it's just nice to be able to be into everybody's studio without, you know, scheduling a, a visit or something. A lot of interaction. I do miss hugs though, and dinner parties, slash having dinner with somebody else. 
beer at pubs. But let's not linger. <laughs> Bianca. All right, so I have, I'm trying to figure out my next move and if I need to add more colors. Am I ever gonna teach a workshop somewhere? Um, are you in the Bay Area? Maybe, I, I think like if I'm invited someplace to teach a workshop, I would be happy to, but I don't really have a setup to do that here, unfortunately. All right, now I'm trying to, I have these beautiful sweet peas from my garden and I'm trying to figure out the right color for it. I think I got it. cat in my studio for the past six months and I'm realizing there's cat hair all over this palette. It's kind of funny. I don't hate that. So I'm getting a question from Bianca as to where I got the beeswax to make this uh, medium and as I mentioned earlier but I don't think you were there it was uh, from my backyard from my bees and Bianca has helped me do beekeeping so good question Yeah, we're not doing it this year and we didn't do it last year, but I still have a ton of beeswax left over, which is really nice. And if any beekeepers out there want to send me some beeswax, I would love that. I'll trade you some paintings for beeswax. Leticia. All right, I'm realizing I want a very bright purple and I need to figure out if I have a purple in my cabinet. Oh wait, I do. Okay. So when dealing with encaustics and any kind of, I should say any kind of pigment, raw pigment, now that you guys all have masks out there, you wanna use them. They're so annoying to put on, aren't they? Am I rocking it? Does it work? Probably way too much purple. But it's good not to breathe in stuff like that, so. Paint a cinder block with some acrylic paint. It's really nice.
Nova. Nova paint is my favorite kind of acrylic paint. Have you guys heard of that line? It's in, um, it's based out of LA. Man, this stuff is awesome. Okay, so for people that have just joined us, um, I'm doing encaustic painting, and that is a combination of wax and pigment. Um, and we're using a hot plate. And so I'm working just from this little bouquet that I picked this morning in my backyard. And I'm working on this surface. <laughs> Doesn't look like anything right now, but I'm, I'm working into it, I promise. And my colors are gonna be much more dull because I'm working with, like, I mean, you can see my palette. It has colors everywhere. They're not, you know, straight out of the tube. They're all mixed. Um, but I kind, of, I kind of like how they have their own uniqueness and a little bit dulled versus the vibrant colors that I normally use. You can still get them pretty vibrant if you use them straight from like the pigment without it being mixed with anything. But that's really hard because I have a limited amount of space on my palette. It's a lot of purple in my garden today. It's been raining here and it's also been sunny like every other day so there's quite a bit of um, things growing, finally. Yeah, thanks for joining. I'm not closing out. Someone's just leaving and saying goodbye. I'll um, end up posting the finished painting if we if I don't finish it in this. Um, Session. I'm trying to paint as fast as I possibly can, I promise. Um, somebody just asked me what kind of brushes I use. And so what I use is leftover, like kind of garbage uh, brushes from my oil painting. Um, anything that's not plastic, I use because it's hitting heat and you don't want it to melt. Um, but they're kind of the ones that you would normally just toss but you don't have to because you can use them for encaustic because once they're used for encaustic they're destroyed oh, can you see that is it i don't know it's only focusing on me
I'm sure there's art stores that will give you special encaustic brushes, but you don't need to, you don't need to spend your money on that. You can use any kind of brush that is natural. Hey. Thanks for everybody that's joining. I do sometimes buy pre-made um, colors just because I can never seem to get that color right from the raw pigment without using really, really toxic chemicals like cadmiums. So try to avoid things when, when possible. You don't need to do that. They're also incredibly expensive. So I use them very sparingly. Right now I'm painting a fern into this little bouquet. Trying to figure out how to do this in <laughs> encaustic is always a challenge. And it, you know, sometimes I'm really feeling it and I can like knock out a really nice painting in one sitting. Other times I just really need like more time to work back into it. It does like hurt my neck because I'm just like looking down a lot. And I'm also holding it very closely to me. So this is all ways in which I don't normally paint when I'm doing oil painting. Oil painting feels like a much more physical activity with more movement. This is just like very fast um, decision making and very fast uh, paint making because everything dries. It dries so fast. Like I just put that mark there and I can touch it and it's dry. Temperature painting. And it really does give such an interesting look. Um, somebody asked what my favorite plants are to paint. Um, Honestly, I really love just painting whatever I can find in my garden. I think that's my favorite thing to do because it's happening here and now. It's the colors of that are blooming that day. But when that's not possible, um, I don't know. I, I like really big leafy green plants that I can give some sort of character to or like represent their character. They're just really fun. I also like plants that kind of look like they are painted too, so they have really interesting shapes and colors and designs into them. So those are like more interesting to look at. You guys can, I hope this is entertaining and not too boring. I mean, I guess everybody can leave if it's, it's not. But I'm trying to, to figure out how to show you this painting as I'm making it without it just being me. So you see where it's going? Greetings from Austria. Oh, nice. Greetings. I really like high contrasting colors. So while I have pink and green in here, it's a little bit like purple and green. 
I think I really want this painting to have tooth and just like be very impasto. So I'm going to not smooth things out. I'm just gonna kind of work into stuff and it's gonna be really fat, a fat painting. Somebody asked, um, when it comes to oil painting, do you generally start with an underlying sketch? How do you, how does your process differ from oil painting to encaustic? Oh, good question. Um, I do do an underlying sketch for my oil paintings, which means I will start from a sketch that I do in my sketchbook and then I'll look at that and I'll draw from it and draw from my still life setup. I tend to work kind of from observation. Um, that being said, I don't necessarily keep specifically to what I'm painting from. I improvise and play around and change things up as I see fit. Um, you can kind of see a little bit from behind me right here where there's a leftover part of the sketch, the underpainting. And so I'll just work back into that over time. The process between that and this, very different. So I'm not doing any underlying sketch. Um, I'm just kind of painting into it from this little bouquet that I picked from my garden this morning. Um, and it's not gonna look as fine tuned as it would over there for two reasons. One, it's encaustic and it's super textural. Um, the other reason is, you know, try to save up time. So nothing's gonna be too refined. I just want you to see the satisfying process of encaustic paint. Cause as soon as you put it on, it's dry. Hi, Heather. Okay. Yeah. So working back into more sweet peas in here. I love seeing the wax melt. I don't think you can see it so well, but. Here, I'll show you here. Does anybody have any other questions? Give me some questions so I can talk while I'm painting. I'm running out of thoughts on my own. It is like butter, exactly like butter. Good question, Heather. I am painting from a still life. I'm painting from a little bouquet that I... All right, I got disconnected, so I'm back. I guess I ran out of time. I went for too long. I don't know if uh, some of you were 
currently or were previously joining me, but thanks for rejoining. I'm still working on the same piece. I didn't realize there was a time limit on this. That makes sense. But the good news is I'm getting close to finishing. And I would love to post a photo of my finished piece on my feed tomorrow so everybody can see that and what it looks like when it's done. Trying to figure out ways in which to do this, where it's, you know, has like a looseness to it, not too, um, not too loose, because I like a little bit of um, definition in my work. some tattoos. Oh, thank you. Thanks for uh, the compliments, guys. And again, I'm working from encaustic, so it's very difficult to paint slow, which works really well for what we're doing here. Um, I'm gonna be painting these nasturtiums. Does anybody else have nasturtiums growing in their backyard? Because they are so fun to paint and to see just popping up and going, like climbing and being all viney like they are. You know that you can eat them, right? Like they're really good in salads. Um, sometimes just to be fancy, I put them into my water. They're a little bitter but they do add a little pizzazz to your, to your salads. And since everybody's doing um, a lot more do-it-yourself stuff, and now it's getting close to the time to plant your garden, you could probably throw some nasturtium seeds in there. And they come back every year. I always think of them as this little gift from my garden. Um, this is what it, this is the nasturtium. And again, I'm painting from this uh, bouquet that I picked from my garden this morning.
think I'm listening to the tops or tops. <laughs> I'm impressed that you can hear the music actually. Yeah, no problem. almost done with this painting, I promise. But seriously, this is pretty fast painting for the amount of material that is on my surface here. And I'll... You can kind of see. Left hand, this is my right hand. I just got wax on my hand now, so you gotta be careful about that with encaustic because you don't want to burn yourself. <laughs> yeah, the camera does uh, put things in reverse. Trying to see if I can show you exactly how this is going on. Any tips for painting digitally? Mm, I'm not sure what you mean. Like in Photoshop? Is that what you're asking? I, do I fuse this paint with heat? Yeah, I'm painting off of a um, electric skillet right now. So I put the wax cake that has beeswax and resin in it. And then, and a little bit of um, some kind of turp, like it's a very special turp. And then I add pigment. And then I have my palette here. So my palette is hot. You wanna keep your brushes hot too because they dry very, very fast. Just like your camp.
I'm getting close. And a lot of people have asked um, what kind of brushes I use. I just use whatever old um, brush that I was going to toss um, from oil painting. Because once you add it, wax to your brush, it's, it, there's no returning. It's gone. It's shot. You actually don't want to get wax on anything. It's really hard to get out. What are my favorite art books? Like, as in regards to artists or? I've really been into like botanical drawings lately, like academic botanical drawings as art books. I mean, I'm sure you can imagine why. Oh, thank you, Leticia. Yeah, so it's it's forming into something. It's not necessarily like a masterpiece, but you know, you have about I don't know, 30 minutes worth of work here. And look, you can touch it. Isn't that so exciting? Um Let's see, I have a whole stack of books out right now that are going into the painting behind me. This here. Um, and let me uh, tell you what they are. So I have a Frida bio, a Sylvia Plumick Mangold painting, a Lori Anderson book, Faith Ringgold, Lois Dodd, Jennifer Bartlett, um, Jane Freelicher, Agnes Pelton, Grandma Moses, uh, Elizabeth Blackadder, Joan Brown, Mama Anderson, and Georgia O'Keeffe. So that's what I'm working from for, for that right now. I'm kind of see. You can kind of see the installation that I'm working from here. That was a uh, quite, all right, I really hope this thing doesn't fall. <laughs> okay, stay. All right, so I'm looking at this piece and I'm trying to think like, all right, logically I want something to come down here because I don't like how the space is a little bit empty and I, I want this to really fill like my actual bouquet, which I want to burst out of each corner. Um, so I'm gonna work into that right now. Yeah, I'm really excited to finish that painting behind me. I've had it in the works for uh, three months now. I think I started it last year in regards to just getting the, the bones of it down. It's 82 by 80 something. I don't know, but it's a lot. And there's a lot of information in it, which I'm excited about. I really like that. But again, time commitment. Whereas 
this little painting right here is dries in an instant. What was your question? Oh, that's a really good question, uh, Heather. My schedule was really off, but I was also not coming into my studio, but ever since I moved everything back into my studio, it's been pretty much the regular scheduling, you know, the regular scheduled program. Which has been really helpful. Trying to think of how I want. Well, looks like I need more blue. Again, always wear your mask when dealing with raw pigment, but eh, whatever, I'll just do it. you don't want the dust floating now that everybody has these masks makes it easier but now I don't have these masks For those of you just joining, I am working on an encaustic painting in my studio live using a hot plate, raw pigment, and a still life setup. Yeah, and let me know if you guys have any questions as I'm working. I'm getting close to being finished with this particular piece. And I would love any suggestions of things that you guys would like to see me work on this week since I'll be doing live streaming every day. Um, kind of a nice way to hang out with people without hanging out with people. Where am I from? I'm in Oakland, California in the States. All right. So that's what I have for right now. And I'm thinking that I want to do something in this background because I, I don't really like this color with these flowers, so. Like, do I want to do black? I think I kind of want to do black to make everything pop more.
Thanks, Leticia. Thanks for joining in. I will post the finished piece so people can have a chance to, to look at it. I'm hoping you guys can kind of see the texture that's happening here. Like you can see the, how it's raised and you can kind of feel, hear it. So maybe a few more. really hard painting flat so used to painting on an easel or on the wall but it's important with the wax that it doesn't drip too much And again, the wax just really dries pretty much on reception on the surface. So you have to work really fast and you have to make a lot of decision or like you have to make a decision and stick to it. I really find encaustic painting to be a good exercise for making other work, just to get my mind going. Satisfying for a few reasons, because I can finish a painting in a day or at least get a good lead on it. You don't have to worry about that drying time, you know? You. I saw some greetings from Chile. So I know that this isn't gonna look exactly like my bouquet. I'm limited with my colors because I'm using this kind of medium where I can't really blend. And I also don't have like a ton of specific pigments. But I like to get the idea of the painting or the still life, my subject. As long as I feel like I've captured my idea, I feel good about it. All right, so I'm gonna switch palettes now because I wanna have a little bit more contrast happening here. Well, I just made an error, so now this is a encaustic brush. So only have one setup of um, that's a bad idea.
think that's better. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this painting with like a darker color, either like on the bottom or the top. I haven't decided yet, so you'll see, and then I'll be done. But that's basically encaustic painting, and I will post the finished painting after I'm done. And I really do thank you guys for joining me and hanging out with me while I've been working on this little painting. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow when I will either show you how to make the encaustic medium or we could do how to make oil paint uh, from pigment and linseed oil. There's lots of things to do. Just let me know what you would like to see or um, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. There's lots of time right now. Uh, does anybody have any other questions before I sign out? And if you do, just feel free to uh, send me a direct message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, thanks guys.